Les and Wendy Morgan train horses in the ranch country north of Chico, California. And to save money, they raise a few head of livestock for their dinner table. We raise livestock to take away from going away to the grocery store and buying it in a package. The taste is a whole lot different, and it's kind of a personal satisfaction knowing that you raised it and that you're responsible for the quality of meat that you eat. There you go, T-Bone. The Morgans always give the animals they raise for food names associated with meat products. It makes it easier for our kids so that we know that we can't make pets out of them because they will eventually end up on our table for a meal. In the spring of 1999, the Morgans brought home a pig they named Spammy. So how's she doing? Her breathing. When full grown, Spammy would fill their freezer with a year's supply of pork. You get approximately four hams, two sets of ribs, bacon, pork steaks. It's all done at the butcher. They wrap it up and smoke it if you want it smoked. Spammy was put in a pen with a calf named Spot who the Morgans were raising for breeding purposes. Friendships between different species are rare, but the two animals immediately hit it off. I have never known a pig to take up with cattle. I've never known a cow to take up with pigs. They just naturally took to one another. Wherever he would lay, she would go down and lay with him. Or if he was eating, she had to get up and eat. Um, they pretty much just followed each other around wherever they went. As the weeks passed and Spammy grew larger, the two friends became inseparable. Spot's always kind of a follower. He kind of follows what she does. Spammy's always been the one to get into anything that she could. Spot, he didn't really care just as long as he got fed. Spammy and Spot even became roommates, sharing a shed together. And then, on the night of May 4th, 1999, disaster struck. An electrical fire broke out in the shed. The fire happened at about 11.23, I think it was. Saw a bright light out the window and came over to the sliding glass door. And that's when I saw the folding shed where Spammy and Spot were housed. Yeah, we have a fire that's out of control. The whole structure was on fire. Um, it was glowing orange. By the time the fire department arrived, the shed was fully engulfed in flames. You could see right through. You could see the two by fours on the wall and just fire everywhere. It just looked like one huge flame, and the heat was so intense you couldn't get 20 feet away from it. I thought, there's no way these animals survived. They had perished in the fire. But as the firefighters began probing the wreckage, the Morgans heard an unusual sound. It just sounded like a really upset child, um, someone who wanted their mom or just somebody that was really frightened. Les followed the sound to a nearby pasture where he made an astonishing discovery. Spammy had survived. She was stressed, really hot, and she had soot marks that were running down her flank. A short distance away, Les discovered Spammy's constant companion, exhausted from the ordeal. When I found Spot, he was scared. He was a little singed, but he wasn't as stressed out as a pig. It wasn't until firefighter Benny Aguilar pointed out a hole punched through the back wall of the shed that everyone realized just how miraculous Spot and Spammy's survival had been. We noticed that her burn mark was parallel with the wood. It pretty much lined up because she, she got a pretty good burn. And also, the calf was singed pretty good, so it must have fallen right behind him. The singe marks on Spammy led investigators to conclude that she'd used her body to batter a hole in the flaming wall. Spammy was a hero. I think there's a miracle here. You wouldn't think that she would go to where the fire was to punch a hole in the wall. I don't think that, given the circumstances, any other animal would have done the same. In the weeks that followed, Spammy and Spot made a full recovery. But despite Spammy's act of bravery, the Morgans couldn't afford to keep her. 
our budget plans for us to butcher him. And so feeding her beyond the six months was an expense that we didn't foresee and that we couldn't really afford. She was still destined for the butcher block. She was gonna be raised to put on the table. That was her destiny. Dear Spammy, you're my hero. But publicity surrounding the fire and the brave little pig who saved her best friend's life took on a life of its own. told me the story, it was me. We got so many letters that her and Spot have their own mailbox. We've gotten pictures. We've actually had people donate a few dollars to help feed her. The Morgans couldn't ignore the tremendous outpouring of love for the four hams, two sets of ribs, bacon, and pork steaks they were raising. And so they decided to let Spammy live. She did something pretty special, and a lot of people took notice. And that pretty much was a turning point for Spammy's life. I think that her friendship with a cow makes her special. She's just a great pig. So it's pretty miraculous the way everything happened and the way things are going. She saved the bacon. It's been several months since Spammy's heroic saved the bacon and the burger, and I wanted to catch up on how everyone's doing. So joining us now from their ranch in Chico, California, are Les and Wendy Morgan. Welcome to the show. Hi, Richard. Hi. Well, it looks like there wasn't enough room for Spot. Uh, Spammy's kind of hogging the limelight there. I hope they're still getting along. They're getting along great, just like brother and sister. They're playing together like two pigs. <laughs> well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, it looks like Spammy's been growing a little bit. How much does she weigh now? Uh, she's about 300 pounds, pretty trim. Uh, she'll probably get up to about 500 pounds, and she's eating like a pig. That's a lot of bacon. She must have quite an appetite. Yeah, she probably eats between 25 and 30 pounds a week, uh, probably averaging money-wise, probably about 50 bucks a week or so. Wow. If people are interested in contacting Spammy and Spot, where can they write? Well, we've set up their own mailbox um, in Corning, California, at P.O. Box 1102. And the zip code's 96021, so that folks can send letters, or if they'd like to send some help any other way, we would really appreciate it. Okay. Do you have any regrets about keeping Spammy? No. No, not at all. Not at all. It's been great. Um, we've really enjoyed having her, probably more so than we thought. I think, yeah, I think we get more enjoyment out of her than the kids do, actually. <laughs> That's great. Well, thanks for sharing your story with us. Thank you. Thank you, Richard.